We're live. We're live. Hi, everybody. My name is Dr. Julio Novoa, and um, we're here uh, live doing the webcam. I'm sorry we're starting late. We had some technical difficulties, but we got that. We got it all set up. I hope so. Um, so let's go over some basic points. Let's go over some basic points related to this uh, procedure. Um, this procedure is called awake liposuction. Um, it is based on modifications of uh, the Klein technique, um, which was uh, invented in 1986 by Dr. Jeffrey Klein and uh, modified by my instructor and mentor, Dr. Anil Gandhi. Also, um, I've had technical training by uh, world-renowned um, cosmetic oncologist, um, uh, Marcos Pelosi, uh, the senior and junior from um, uh, New Jersey. So what is awake liposuction? Well, basically what we're talking about is a mod uh, the use of lidocaine, which is a local anesthetic. And what that uh, anesthetic does is it numbs tissue. Well, when it was uh, first uh, discovered or, uh, or created, uh, lidocaine and uh, and finally approved by the FDA. Lidocaine use is seven milligrams per kilogram body weight of lidocaine is um, considered to be the upper limit for its use. Anything higher than that is considered to be toxic. Dr. Klein had, um, in his brilliance, was able to, and and his pharmacology uh, and training in pharmacology was able to uh, modify the use of lidocaine and by by diluting it in normal saline along with epinephrine and sodium bicarb uh, was able to create a solution that will, um, be, will be able to anesthetize tissue f over a broader area for a longer period of time. And this solution has been able to be used not only in liposuction but in tummy tucks, in facial surgery, uh, saffronous vein ablation, and um, also what I do, vaginal rejuvenation surgery. So all of these procedures can be done now using modifications of, of local uh, lidocaine called tumescent uh, uh, anesthetic lidocaine. And it can, uh, these procedures can be done without the use of IV sedation, without the need for preoperative medication or interoperative medication. So we have in part eliminated the need for either IV or general anesthesia for uh, um, certain cosmetic procedures. Um, the technique itself, although it's been available for over 25 years, has been used almost exclusively by cosmetic surgeons rather than plastic surgeons. And so most plastic surgeons know very little about this technique. Uh, the reason that I wanted to present it today is because despite four years of its use in El Paso, Texas, uh, we we still have uh, uh, cosmetic and plastic surgeons that are stating that the procedure is not safe or cannot be done at all, especially in the case of uh, breast augmentations. I uh, I trained with Dr. Anil Gandhi, who uh, who has his practice in California. He developed and created the um, awake breast augmentation in uh, 2006. I trained with him in 2008 and have done over 650 uh, awake breast augmentations. I've also modified it, uh, his technique, in order to not require uh, any preoperative or interoperative medications whatsoever. And also been able to uh, do this technique and placing breast implants underneath the um, uh, pectoralis muscle, uh, w again, without the need for uh, preoperative or interoperative medications. Once the, t the tissue is anesthetized, the, the, the procedures for either doing breast augmentation, liposuction, or tummy tucks are pretty much straightforward and, and the same as they would be done with IV sedation or general anesthesia. But uh, um, I think that after 650 operations that I've been able to do and over um, 3,000 operations that Dr. Neil Gandhi has been able to do, I think we have already proven that the technique is safe and effective. However, we still have uh, plastic surgeons um, that are uh, commenting that that it's not safe or effective and so I wanted to be able to show that the, the awake techniques are in fact safe and effective however um, uh, I don't know what m more I can do to, to try to um, to make that clear so I decided that in order to try to uh, educate the general public and 
uh, my colleagues who are uh, cosmetic surgeons and plastic surgeons, as well as the anesthesiologist, um, is to volunteer to do a procedure myself. And so, all putting all jokes aside, I mean, I, I'm not going to do a breast augmentation. <laughs> uh, and so I decided that liposuction would be the best technique to try. And so today we're going to do an awake liposuction where we're using tumescent lidocaine anesthetic to numb the abdominal tissue as well as the pectoralis tissue. And we're going to um, remove this uh, tissue and also do a fat transfer uh, to the face as well as the buttocks. Uh, unfortunately, I'm too shy to actually videotape or put on live webcam uh, fat transfer to my buttocks. So we'll stop the procedure once we com have completed the liposuction. We are also creating a documentary for this procedure that will be available on YouTube in about two to three weeks. So um, you'll be able to find the, the see the post-operative um, uh, results of the particular uh, technique that we're doing today. Uh, I will also um, be narrating the procedure uh, while fully awake, fully conscious, and maintaining informed consent in order to uh, hopefully, uh, again, once and for all, show that awake techniques maintain informed consent throughout the entire procedure when done when done uh, properly and therefore especially in the case of breast augmentations patients that are, would des are, are wanting to have their uh, breast augmented can actually make a final choice make the decision pick their size um, within reason uh, during the procedure itself which is something very very important because we have been able to f uh, uh, the, the literature seems to suggest that over 90 percent of patients that uh, have breast augmentation, if they would have had the opportunity to, um, to go larger, they would have gone larger. So in the awake or the tumescent anesthetic breast surgery technique that I've created, we actually sit patients up during surgery so that they can see the procedure done, and uh, excuse me, see the results of the procedure and, just, and be able to determine exactly what size they want to be. Uh, this, uh, this technique has actually been recorded and I presented um, and, and posted on YouTube under awake breast augmentation in a 68-year-old patient, the actual results of, of this, um, of this uh, procedure. And uh, we've gotten in two years 145,000 hits on that particular video. So if you're interested in seeing an awake breast augmentation on a 68-year-old patient, I, I would encourage you to go to YouTube and either type in my name, uh, Dr. Navoa, or ask Dr. Navoa, or awake breast augmentation in a 68-year-old patient. This patient is now 71. She looks beautiful. She still looks young, um, and and um, her breasts still look very young. So um, from this point, I'm going to take a about a 15-minute break in order to prepare the surgical room, and from there we'll um, we'll get started again. Uh, obviously, this time around with me and 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 gowned or or uh, ready for the surgery itself. So. From this point, we're going to go. We're going to move on to the surgical room. So, if you need about a 15-minute break, or maybe about yeah, we'll probably start again about 9:35 or 9:40. Stopping right now.